Hey guys, this is Caleb from the Command Valley coming at you with another Theros Beyond Death Commander deck tech. Here on the Command Valley, we talk about all things Commander, provide you with weekly deck techs to help you brew, gameplay videos, and so much more. Today, I'm going to be talking about Nylea Keen-Eyed, the new mono green god from Theros Beyond Death. But first, be sure to hit that like button, subscribe to our channel, and even hit that bell to be notified about our weekly deck techs and our other videos. Also, don't forget to check out our other deck techs for Theros commanders such as Uro, Siona, Perforos, Athreos, Thassa, and Heliod. Lastly, episode 2 of Duel of the Peaks, our gameplay series, is out. So click the link appearing at the top right of this video or in the description of the video and check it out as soon as you're done watching this one. Alright, let's jump in. Nylea Keen-Eyed costs 3 generic mana and 1 green for a legendary enchantment creature god, and she's a 5-6 with indestructible, and she says, as long as your devotion to green is less than 5, Nylea isn't a creature. And then she's got two abilities, the first one says, creature spells you cast cost 1 generic mana less to cast. And then she's also got an activated ability that is 2 and 1 green and says, reveal the top card of your library. If it's a creature card, put it into your hand. Otherwise, you may put it into your graveyard. First off, if Nylea is online, being a 5-6 indestructible creature for 4 is already pretty good. Her other abilities are great for multiple creature strategies in Commander, and most of those strategies will likely result in you having a lot of green devotion, except one that I can think of. So in this video, we're going to talk about the different avenues that you can take when building Nylea, the strategy that I think I would enjoy playing the most, which doesn't necessarily mean it's the best or only way, some budget versions of that strategy, and some upgrades. The very first deck that I thought of throwing Nylea into was my mono green elf deck. With Nylea commanding my elves, I'd be solving one of the major issues that mono green elf decks tend to have, which is overproducing mana. With all the one drop Lanwar elf variants and cards like Marwyn the Nurturer, Leyline of Abundance, Elvish Archdruid, and Priest of Titania, the ramp gets absolutely out of control and I always find myself with more mana than I can actually use. Nylea could then become a powerhouse of a mana sink and allow me to channel all that extra mana into drawing creatures that I need to close out the game. Mono Green Elves is already an effective and powerful strategy with a lot of great synergies and Nylea would be right at home with them. However, in my opinion, there are better mono green elf commanders. <coughs> cough, cough, Izuri, cough, cough. You can also build a deck around what I call a creature fall strategy. It's not a real thing, it's just what I call it. The point of this strategy is to play cards that draw you more cards when you cast a creature, such as Beast Whisperer, Glimpse of Nature, Soul of the Harvest, etc. Then you play a ton of little creatures that become free to cast when Nylea is on the field. The list is huge for those creatures, but it's cards like Ugin's Conjurant, Ginger Brute, Inquisitive Puppet, Universal Automaton, Ornithopter, etc. With cards like Beast Whisperer on the field, you will draw tons of cards if your deck is full of these little free creatures. The goal is to draw cards until you can find the cards that benefit from having lots of creatures on the field like Galta Primal Hunger or even better cards like Overwhelming Stampede and Overrun to just let you win the game. While this seems like a very unique and fun way to build Nylea, I would personally probably get bored after playing it a few times. Both of these are great options and might be better than how I'd like to play Nylea, but I am personally going to go with the best of the best green creature heavy strategy, and I'll use elements from both of these other strategies to build my deck. All right, so for my strategy, we want most of our deck to be creatures that synergize with Nylea. So anytime we can replace a non-creature spell with a creature that does the same thing, we probably should. This is true even for ramp. In our ramp section, we've got all the best ramp options because we're playing green. So for mana dorks, we can use any or all of the aforementioned one drop mana dork variants, land war elves, elvish mystic, arbor elf, find horn elves, and Jiraga Tree Speaker. Findhorn Elves and Jiraga Tree Speaker are a little pricier than, than these other one drops, but we've got other great creature ramp options at higher mana costs, such as Wood Elves, Karametra's Acolyte, Lanor Tribe, 
Incubation Druid, and Paradise Druid. If you need to or just want to include non-creature ramp spells, you've of course got access to Rampant Growth, Cultivate, Kudama's Reach, Sky Shroud Claim, etc. Just remember that cards like Sylvan Scrying that only put a land into your hand are not ramp. As for Artifact Ramp, I wouldn't include very much, if any. However, cards with reductions on them like Nylea's can stack nicely with her, such as Ronus's Monument and Emerald Medallion. Emerald Medallion is currently at $4, but it's the cheapest of the Medallion cycle and it's really good in this deck. Though, again, it would be much better to stick with Creature Ramp in this deck for our strategy. One creature that you'll definitely want in this deck and that is related to Ramp, but not necessarily Ramp, is Seedborn Muse. This card is nuts, and it will make getting multiple activations of Nylea off an absolute breeze because she says untap all permanents you control during each other player's untap step. Despite having multiple reprints, this card is still kind of pricey, but if you have one, definitely play it. Another upgrade that we can make in this section is Birds of Paradise. You might be thinking, Birds of Paradise is a weird choice, Caleb. Why would you play Birds of Paradise? And you're right, it is weird. We don't need a ramp creature that can tap for any color, we just need green. But trust me when I say our win cons will actually make this a good card even in the late game. We'll get to that later. One thing we really don't want to do with Nylea is sink mana into her last ability and whiff. Being able to set up or know the top card of our library is very important for maximizing value from our hard earned mana. Dryad Green Seeker, Moldiah Channelers, Garrick's Horde, and Cream of the Crop are all excellent ways to make sure that we never whiff with Nylea's ability, and they can help us do other things as well. Dryad Green Seeker will get lands into our hand from the top of our deck when we know we don't have a creature. Moldiah Channelers can act as both ramp or a powerful creature, and we can have some control over that. Garrick's Horde lets us straight up cast creatures from the top of our deck when we need to. And Cream of the Crop can help us sift through unneeded cards to get to our win cons or whatever else we want. Duskwatch Recruiter doesn't let us know or set up the top card of our library, but he does work really well with this strategy and is actually pretty similar to Nylea. For one and a green, he's a 2-2 human warrior werewolf with pay two and a green, Look at the top three cards of your library, reveal a creature from them, and put it into your hand. The rest go on the bottom. Sweet. So this lets us do exactly what Nylea's ability already lets us do, but we can dig three cards deep instead of one, which is great when we either don't know what is on top of our deck or if we know it's not a creature. Then he has the Werewolf Claws that allows him to transform and he becomes a 3-3 Werewolf with Nylea's other ability to discount all our creatures by one generic mana. As you probably already know, there are some seriously powerful cards that we can use as upgrades in this part of our deck. The list is long. Corsair of Crufix, Vizier of the Menagerie, Sylvan Library, Sensei's Divining Top, Miri's Guile, and Scroll Rack. These are all incredibly powerful cards, and if you have them, play them. If you want to add them in later, start with Corsair of Crufix and Vizier of the Menagerie, since they are cheaper to buy and they are also creatures that will synergize with our Nylea creature strategy. Two more cards to consider adding if you have the money or have them lying around are Worldly Tutor and Sylvan Tutor. Both tutors allow you to find a creature in your deck, shuffle your deck, then set that creature on top of your deck for a very reasonable cost of one green mana. If you need it right away, simply pay another two and one green to draw it with Nylea and you've got yourself a worse but green Diabolic Tutor. Or you can just draw those creatures with any of our many options for drawing cards in this deck. Primordial Sage and Soul of the Harvest are both four generic and two green mana to cast. Primordial Sage is a 4-5 that draws you a card whenever you cast a creature spell, and Soul of the Harvest is a 6-6 with Trample that says whenever another non-token creature enters the battlefield under your control, you may draw a card. These are both great budget options for this deck and are creatures that synergize with our commander. Beast Whisperer costs 2 and 2 green and does the same thing as Primordial Sage. Regal Force is another creature that draws us cards for each green creature we control when it ETBs. The Magic Pokedex, or Life Crafter's Bestiary, is an artifact for 3 mana that scries you 1 at the beginning of your upkeep and has the ability, whenever you cast a creature spell, you may pay 1 green. If you do, draw a card. Shamanic Revelation and Return of the Wildspeaker both cost 5 to draw some cards with some added benefits. 
Return of the Wild Speaker can also be used to pump all of our creatures power and toughness by 3 which could help us end the game. Though they are not creatures, some upgrades for our draw section are Guardian Project, Rishkar's Expertise, and the Great Henge. I've said it before in a previous video, but I have been very impressed with Guardian Project and it continues to be one of my favorite green cards. Lastly, Eternal Witness is some great recursion in this deck, especially when she only costs 2 green mana thanks to Nylea. For interaction, let's start with Reclamation Sage, Manglehorn, and Acidic Slime, who are great at dealing with pesky artifacts or enchantments, though Manglehorn can only deal with artifacts. Casting these guys for one generic mana less will feel so good, I guarantee it. I don't need to tell you much about Beast Within because it is a green staple, but you've also got cards like Olvenwald Tracker and Prey Upon that can be used as creature removal when combined with one of our big fatties, which we'll get to. For some protection, you can consider the new Destiny Spinner that makes it so none of your creatures or enchantments can be countered. If your playgroup plays a lot of counters, then definitely try her out. Blossoming Defense is an instant for one green that says, target creature you control gets plus two plus two and gains hexproof until end of turn. A well-timed Blossoming Defense is a great way to make sure that your key creatures live long enough to do what you need them to do. Some upgrades for protection are Heroic Intervention and Asceticism. Heroic Intervention is an instant for one and a green that says permanence you control gain hexproof and indestructible until end of turn. Unfortunately, at the time of this recording, this Heroic Instant is priced at a whopping 20 bucks. As is Asceticism, which is a 5 drop enchantment that gives your creatures hexproof and it has the activated ability of 1 in a green, regenerate target creature. If you can get these two cards as upgrades for your deck, I would definitely suggest that you do so. So how do we win the game? Well the first way is, you are playing a mono green creature deck so win with some fatties. We've already touched on some utility fatties with green's favorite keyword, trample. Garrick's Horde and Soul of the Harvest are not just good for drawing cards and playing creatures from the top of our deck, they are great attackers as well. Trample is going to be your best friend when it comes to winning with our big green fatties. We can also turn all of our creatures into sizable trampling monsters with cards that we've already talked about, Overwhelming Stampede and Overrun. These kinds of effects are excellent finishers in this deck. The OG mono green planeswalker Garrick Wildspeaker is already some decent ramp and he's also got an overrun as his ultimate which you can activate on the second turn you have him as long as no damage is dealt to him. Remember, whenever possible we want to have creatures that do the same thing as spells instead of those spells. So cards like Goreclaw, Terror of Calcisma, and Endray's Forerunners are good alternatives or additions to our win cons. Depending on the rest of my deck, I may be a little less inclined to play Goreclaw though because it only buffs our already buff creatures. If you can, replace these creatures and spells with Pathbreaker Ibex, Crater of Behemoth, of course, and Triumph of the Hordes. Alright, you've made it to the end of the video. Thanks so much for watching. Though Nylea may not be the most exciting of the new gods, there are plenty of paths that you can take with her, both old and new. Be sure to comment below and tell us if you think there's anything we missed, if you have any questions, and what other commanders you'd be interested in seeing us do videos for. Also, please like this video, subscribe to our channel, and hit that bell to be notified about our weekly deck techs, set reviews, and gameplay videos. Episode 2 of Duel of the Peaks is out, so be sure to watch it and let us know how you liked it. Lastly, don't forget to check out our other deck techs as well as the full Nylea deck lists in the show notes. Thanks guys, girls, and goats.